Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest from the racing world with their stories, their paths, their, their racing, racing roots. roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and their YouTube channel. Also on JerseyCapeYachts.com. Be sure to hit that subscribe, turn on the bell notification, so you'll be notified every time we go live. Now here's our host, David Ham. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest from the racing world with their stories, their paths, their, their racing, racing roots. roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and their YouTube all right welcome to racing roots with ham so i i don't know if you were watching that twice or whatever but that's okay at least you got to see it a couple of one and a half times or so but hope everybody's doing good this evening hope you can see us just fine but we got joey knuckles in with us today this evening so uh how you doing joey well let me start off by telling you joey's an idiot story is that right <laughs> I, I was at petty enterprise and rcr today and i was thinking that uh, y'all were in Salisbury, so I called Phil, and he says, "No, man, you're at the wrong track. <laughs> you need to." <laughs> so, oh man. So, uh, yeah, cut through, got cut through uh, back there. Went by DEI and, and and came on up through here. But this is a, you have a really nice uh, deal here, and got to bring the wife up here. It looks like some pretty good shopping. She's all about that. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's plenty of places around here to yeah. go shopping, and then and on Wednesday nights we have our live music here in the studio. So. Come oh. hang out with us at 7.30. Oh, okay. Yeah. Come in and hang out with us any night, any uh, Wednesday night at 7.30. Yeah. For sure. And, of course, anytime I have my Racing Reach shows, which is every Monday evening, you can come in and hang out with us as well. I got my new Jersey Cape uh, Yachts shirt on right now with the long sleeves on it right there. Feels there you go. Yours. Yeah, so I want to thank our sponsor, Jersey Cape Yachts, as you can see in our intro. So how you been doing? I hadn't talked to you in about, I don't know, six months or so, I think. Something like that. Well, I'm going through DTs because I haven't been able to get in the garage since March. Oh, yes. Uh, and I have a, a gear transmission business, and that's almost impossible when I can't even hardly get into these shops. And I was charging by the mile, so now with all the impound stuff, everything's been pretty much you know in half. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the race teams, the three manufacturers are really – they don't want s selling used parts mm -hmm. they because they all have their different grinds and their different philosophies and their different heat treats and so it's getting a little bit tougher for me and especially with this new car that's going to come out basically we're running a formula one sports car indy car you know transmission in it behind so um and there's a company that's going to be doing everything uh, in house it looks like so uh, okay that's going to be that's going to be pretty pretty difficult on some teams yeah so um so is that what you did back in the day in in your nascars is that i mean where you got the experience to do what you're doing right now well in in 1971 50 years ago i uh, got on the school bus and there were three kids with these cool white t-shirts that had stp on them <clears throat> yeah and I said, hey, man, where, where, where'd you get those? And they said, well, we, we just moved up here from Houston, and our father's going to run for NASCAR Winston Cup Rookie of the Year. And his name was Walter Ballard mm -hmm. uh, and, and his wife, Katie. And they said, man, just, just uh, we've seen where you got on the bus. Just hop, hop on there, and uh, my mom will take you home. We'll show you the race car. Well, little did I know that I would be putting a model car down and start swimming out of a parts washer and building gears and transmissions and lear learning how to weld. You know, we, we didn't have a full-time employee. Katie really did a lot of the engine assembly. And then us kids were, you know, we had one car and two motors and and a Winnebago. Yeah, <laughs> and how about away, that? Away, away we went. And yeah. the, the teachers were really good to us where we could go to Daytona for two weeks, they'd give us all our homework. Um, so when we came back, we we fit, we fell right in. Mm -hmm. So um, in independent racing, that was uh, that's uh, how I grew up and, and still am. 
That's cool. And so we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute where you, uh, where you actually grew up. I mean, I already know the answer, but my, some of my listeners may not know that, but I want to uh, do some shout outs right quick. Gary Flattery's up in the Ozarks. He says, what's, what's up? Hardest working man in NASCAR. And Hey, Joey, hey. we were talking about you before the show. Cause Gary started working at Robert Yates racing probably 97. I'm thinking 90. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Uh-huh. He came to work at Sabco and then he left there to go to Robert Yates and he was there up until, I don't know when he retired, uh, five, six, seven years ago, something like that. Uh huh. So he was there quite a while. And, uh, Rachel Robbins down in Charlotte. She says, hello, Gary. Hope you have a good day talking to Gary Flattery. Of course, he's still laid up with his ankle replacement and, uh, there's Phil Cavalli right here with us. And I got a Phil cam tonight, so I'll put him on here in just a minute. Dickie Dennis is up there in Virginia, the infamous fence climber from 2014 at Richmond. Oh, okay. If you remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. And then, let's see, Fox Terrier Mom. Phil, you know who that person is? Fox Terrier Mom. Yeah, I know who she is. She's she says, a good friend of mine, a fellow yeah. classmate. You know, nice. Down in Texas. I didn't know your last name was Honey. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh baby <laughs> yeah it says how feel honey actually the first girl i ever kissed oh. i think second grade or besides something. your cousin oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. I'm from upstate New York. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. There you go. And Jody Brooke, B R U C H, I believe she yeah. said that was German. So good day, yeah, mate, to you. Yeah. Listening from upstate New York, heart of the Finger Lakes. Yep. And Paul Rodriguez is down in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Don Clark's here in Statesville. And let's see who else we got. Jad Hyder's up in Ohio. Ohio, I have to say it like that. Sissy Odell here in Statesville. And I believe I've got the Reverend Burgess on here with us tonight. Uh, Reverend Burgess, th- thanks for tuning in. He says the intro looks professional. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. I can help you on yours, too. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Wayne Co- Puglis, who was with the uh, Jersey Cape Yachts. Thank you all so much for the mm-hmm. shirts and the sponsorship. And uh, Jim Dooley. Uh, Jim Dooley's actually the one that sent us these shirts, so thank you for that, Jim. Well, he he called and had it arranged, and then Janine took care of it. But my wife is asking a question. Tracy says, ask Joey how he got his nickname. Now, she may be confused because Knuckles is your last name. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the coolest names, though. But if you do a, tr- a search for Joey Knuckles, you see this tattoo artist if you don't put NASCAR behind it. Yeah. So I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a whole lot uh, more famous than I am. So if I ever get out there to Vegas, I I want to go say hello to him and and uh, have him put a tattoo uh, of the 28 yeah. number there there on me. Uh, but my my real name was Alfred, and my grandmother said that I wasn't smart enough to be called Alfred, so she nicknamed me Joey. Oh, is that right? And that's that's what <laughs> okay. that's what stuck. All right. And, uh, well, I guess she got – maybe that's what she meant then. Uh-huh. So Gary says, tell the story about the clock on the wall. It's stuck at the same, on the same time always. The clock on the wall. Probably yep. the one behind and you. Sandy Tingley in Mooresville. <laughs> uh, oh, are you talking about that clock? Yeah, that's what I bet <laughs> Oh, my goodness. About. I thought he was <laughs> yeah. talking to, to Joey asking a question. I thought there was some inside, backside joke mm-hmm. or something. Uh, I'll tell you about that in a minute, but I do have a clock that was uh, – Norman Kazamishu. Uh huh. Norman. It was his clock, mm-hmm. and and it was the Haviland clock, uh-huh. I believe. So uh, I've got that hanging up in my shop. And I, I sure do miss Norman. What mm-hmm. what a breath of fresh air. Uh, his family grew up in Hawaii. Uh, when Norman was a child, you know they they had to deal with Pearl Harbor, and they were actually in in a concentration camp until the war was over. Hmm. And. Um, Norman re- remembered a little bit about that, but uh, ter- terrific em- employee. The first time I ever met Norman, he was uh, uh, working with Morgan Shepherd. He was his only employee running in in the Bush series. Okay, yeah, it's for the very first time I, I met Norman, and that was actually the first Asian I ever seen. I went, wow, this, this is pretty cool. This guy's yeah. got one good tan. Look at all the hair he's got. Man, look like Mick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, uh, Norman, did you go to um, Japan? Yes. Okay. Yes. I went in 96 and 98. Mm-hmm. But I remember Norman being there. It's kind of like. Yeah, he fell, he fell right in there. Right. Yeah. And then Big E, they were all taking pictures of Big E. Yeah. Because, you know, he was just so much more taller than he was. I mean, they were, they were yes. taking pictures of uh, of him. Uh, more than they were the drivers and stuff like that. <laughs> yes, so, yes, 
he was huge. Yeah, yeah, he was big, big, tall. We we miss him also. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, I had saw you at his um, memorial service when we went for that. And well, no, we went for yeah, he's in Normans, and then um, and then Big E's at yeah. Robert at Robert's Church. Yeah, so fortunately, I was able to see Big E before he passed away. Like he quit working there and then moved yeah. away. It's like two weeks later is when he passed away. But I got to spend some time with Norman on Easter Sunday. Oh, okay. And then I think it was a week or so later. Yeah. But I got to sit there and talk to him for quite a bit. So that was a good time. The mayor. Is that what he called him? Yeah. The, yeah, that's what Scott Feldhausen yeah. says. The mayor. Yeah, the so mayor. The clock on the wall is stuck because it's a, actually a um, a banner that yeah. has, but it's its own uh, 929. So it's right behind us here, the clock tower stage. Oh, okay. <laughs> but there's a clock on top of this building that's like 100 years old. So that's why it's called the Clock Tower Building. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. All right, so back to your for your beginnings. So you were born in, in Charlotte. Yes. And which side of town did you live on? The poor one. Yeah, well, me too. <laughs> I was too. I was born in 71, but I was on the west side of Charlotte. Uh, I was, I was uh, raised until the third grade off of East Boulevard before it became really – you know, populated and went to a school which is no longer there called Wilmore Elementary. Okay. Uh, and and um, they started doing some segregation stuff, and, and my mother wasn't too happy with that because I was going to be leaving the house and walking a whole lot further and and getting up an hour earlier and being shipped on the other side of town. So she bought a mobile home, and that's how I mm-hmm. ended up in, in, in Huntersville out there. She bought a lot, and... Uh, we had a, a little mobile home out there, and you know, I, I, most of the kids I went to school with were third or fourth generations, and they, were, you know, were all farmers. So when it come time to, you know, get the crops up, school was pretty much empty, and a, a lot of kids were kind of forced when they turned 16 to just stay at home and work to keep the family going, uh, because when you turn 16, you didn't. You didn't have to finish at that particular time. So, and then Hunters will just, when they built Interstate 77 there, Hunters will uh, just got so popular. All the, and there was two, two years of a very bad drought there. And the farmers went to the banks and then, you know, when they couldn't pay um, and you had all these home builders wanting the property, that was, uh, that was, that was pretty tough on them. Yeah, so when you moved to Huntersville, there probably wasn't much out there at all. No, I remember um, we went out there, and it was the first time I really seen a highway being built. And uh, the principal, Mr. Hunt, he says, uh, life as is, is we know it is going to change, and I think it's going to change for the worst. This is just really going to make this, this place boom. Mm-hmm. And he had seen what Interstate 85 did. Um, so my- my wife said she thinks that um, her mom went to that elementary school. Her mom would have been, um, uh, her last name was Earnhardt. Uh-huh. I didn't forget her mom's first name now. Sam, oh, what was it? Phil, what was her ma- her mom's first name? Who? I'm just on the spot right Martha now. Martha so. Earnhardt? No, Did it was it was uh, my wife's, Tracy's mother. Oh, I don't know. Sorry, Tracy, I don't remember her name. Huh. So tell me her name and see if they, maybe they went to school together, but I think she's, she might have been a little bit older than Joey. But anyway, Dargan Watts is down in uh, Florida. He does the, um, he was involved in doing the parade for the Old Beach Road Course uh, and down at Daytona, down at, uh, was it Ponce Inlet? Uh-huh. That whole parade that they just had, he's involved in that stuff there. They had and, it last year. I, I was a guest down there. Oh, were you really? Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. And it was amazing. The, the cars yeah. that were still running, yeah. that, I mean, it is you know, the original plug wires, you know, the, the oh, batteries, you know, the stuff, you know, I was sitting there looking at it. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, there were, there were a lot of them, Phil. I mean, it, it, it was, it was a big deal. And all you seen was smiles on these guys. And yep. you could just feel the love for when they used to drive them, you know, on the beach. Oh, and, yeah. And yeah. That was, and that's that, cool. And that road, you can still get a feel for how the sand, you know, as you're driving down. Yeah, going go across and the start, road. And, yeah, it's yeah. not a lot different, you know. And you can imagine them going 120 miles an hour down there. <sighs> yeah, he said they prayed on the old beach. Road course was uh, was great. Former Grand National driver Johnny Allen led the parade. Uh-huh. So, 
And these were all people that I've always wanted to meet that I never had a chance to. We'd, we'd either be, we'd see them walking through the garage or whatever, but usually we were yeah. trying to get the car on the racetrack or, you know, stuff like that. It was, uh, you know, the, the Daytona 500, you know, I worked for two people at the 28 car, Waddell Wilson for 10 years and Robert Yates and every breath we took was about the Daytona 500. Mm -hmm. And um, and we ended up winning seven of them. Yeah, how about that? How cool is that? I, I mean, that's uh, you know, that that's 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 pretty impressive with different makes, manufacturers, uh, drivers, uh, personnel. But I mean, it was it was all about the Daytona 500. I mean, we would leave Atlanta and go straight to Daytona and test. And if we weren't at Daytona testing, we were at Talladega. Um, and and it showed, you know, because yeah. we were running a limited schedule, so we weren't worried about getting our Richmond car. Right. Our next race would be two weeks later at Rockingham. So. So your first Cup event was the Daytona 500 in 1986 with Yarborough. Um, as as with far a as guy? a crew chief. Crew person. No, no. I mean, I I've been a crew person since 1971. Oh, well, yeah. that was Walter Ballard, right? Walter, Walter, Walter Ballard. Okay. Yep. And they, they, they wouldn't give us a license until we were 16, Phil. So um, a, a lot of the racetracks would just kind of put us at the end, you know, because you had Sterling that was working on his dad. Elmo Langley's son was, you know, right, right. it was just, it was, it was all we could do to get to the racetrack. Yeah. And, uh, but they wouldn't let us pit other than like when we went to like Nashville or something like that to where they you kind of keep you know that nashville we pitted on that little quarter mile so uh i think we could kind of kind of hide out on that but uh yeah that was uh we went to um we went to charlotte and it was all about the car owner points and with the ballards and and they had this uh deal called the big chance special and 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 what that was is they did voting on Hickory, Concord, and the dirt track at Metrolina. And whoever had the most votes would get to start a Winston Cup race. Okay. And Junior Johnson used to furnish a car for that, but Kale had been wrecking everything he had up there, so we were getting a lot of parts from Junior, and Junior got us the deal. Um, Bruton Smith came over uh, to our little one-car garage, and had five thousand dollars in it, and he said, "Y'all are guaranteed to start a race with this young kid." All right. And Walter went and and bought headers for it, a new carburetor, um, new new valves. You know, kind of kind of got us really up to speed, and it showed when we got there. Mm -hmm. And 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 Dale Earnhardt was the driver. Oh, okay. And he had run one race before that the year before in ed negree's car and ed kept telling walter he says man you, you got to try to sell this guy he's really he's really fast and he'll work on the car mm -hmm. and we we qualified great and uh we had brand new tires we bought new wheels and, and run up front and the shifter pack came apart in it mm -hmm. uh, so we had to change the transmission we went out and finished and we had the U.S. Army on the side, and Walter begged the people up at Michigan. That was our next race to, if we could leave it on, if they could just pay the tire bill. But we just never could put no money together yeah. for that. Okay. Well, speaking of uh, Walter Ballard, there was um, a Sherman Ballard asked a question. He mm -hmm. says, uh, asked Joey how far he rode his bicycle to get to Dad's shop to work on, on the race car. Um, well, I needed a tire sponsor. It was so far away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but when I was when I was playing football um, uh, for the high school, junior high and, and uh, high school, I would ride back, and then my mom would pick me up. She worked at Kmart and would pick me up at eleven. But all the other times, I'd ride the school bus with them. And Katie, we had to do all our homework first, mm. and and then go work. I mean, we, it, it, it was a job, yeah. And um, it was a family-run business, and and I would have just been at home by by myself, you know, reading stock car magazine, yeah. 
and uh, so and then you know then got got to travel and got the respect of a lot of people in the garage for our ages and what we could actually do yeah and we caught a lot of flack like you know a bunch of kids running around and it 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 um it was it, it was kind of a tough deal but you know man when 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 we got old enough to where we could really go across pit wall we really showed them what we could do well that's what uh, that leads into what richard bossy just texted me and said ask joey who he started changing tires for before davy i'm assuming uh well, Kale, and then Walter Ballard. Well, we had we had uh, you know Walter Ballard, and then he had a he had a heart attack. <clears throat> we had uh, we had Ty Scott driving, and Ty was paying the bills. And we went to Darlington for the Southern Five Hundred. We crashed on the first lap of practice, went home, and got our Super Speedway car. Come back the next day and crashed it. So we went and borrowed a car from Joe Mahalik. Uh, and got into race and tie crashed. I mean, before the, you know, for the first fuel stop, and Walter, Walter fell o- over with a heart attack, and that was pretty much the end of our independent deal. Mm-hmm. So I worked at Hutcherson Pagan. I was uh, building all the front subframes. Banjo Matthews, he he bought all the subframes from from us, but my heart was at the racetrack, mm-hmm. and the the Ballards had, they they were. They had uh, Ballard and Sons. They were working on their own stuff, and I think I think Stoney took off and went to the Navy there for a while. So I went to work for uh, Billy Hagen with Terry Labonte in the middle of 1980, and that's the first time I ever got to go to Victory Lane uh, was the Southern 500 with Terry, mm-hmm. and I worked uh, with with them from 80, 81, and 82. And Jake Elder was a crew chief, and I didn't own a car. I couldn't get to and from work. Um, I didn't, couldn't get couldn't get no credit, and uh, you know, pretty much living off per diem. And Jake says, "Hey, we got an opportunity to go go down here with Ray Mock Racing, and Neil Bonnet's going to run one year." And Jake's wife had cancer, and the shop was like five minutes from his home. Okay, and so I went down there with 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 Jake, and we won. The Bush Clash, the 125, uh, and three or four cup races that year, mm-hmm. and um, I was I was just a- absolutely give out. I mean, I just you work, you work. We and we had five employees. We were doing everything. Bob sure. Bob was building the motors down there in Miami, and you know we had a, a good organization there. But uh, Bob Bob and Butch said, well, "Joy, we don't know if we're going to have a deal next year." You know the Chevrolet deals with Neil Warner. We we can't really find something. So Waddell got a hold of me, and I, I went over there. And uh, the first race we went to was the Daytona 500, and I kept begging Waddell. So Waddell, look, we we need to practice pits. He says, I'll before the race we'll 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 have one four tire stop in the in the 125. Mm-hmm. And 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 that and and we ended up winning that race. And then we went to. Uh, Martinsville up there, and Jimmy Means lapped us five times. So we went from victory lane to getting lapped five times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Waddell's over there begging Harry Rainier to let him park the car. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Jimmy Means wearing yeah. us out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, Dargan says, tell Joey I have his card that he gave me mm-hmm. after the parade last year, but uh, but can't find it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah just send me your address and I'll, I'll take care of you the hall of fame actually in charlotte uh, did some some postcards of me and uh i, I get them at, at the house all the time 115 uh, i mean uh, 1521 verdict ridge drive in denver all right very good maybe that could be our, our for the prize winner this evening too so. yeah no problem yes <laughs> And I think we kind of already answered this, Derek Colson. If Joey started out working with the Ballards, I wonder if he was around Dale Sr. when he drove Walter's car. Yes. You mentioned that already. And uh, Tracy had said her mom's name was Debbie. And I don't know how I forgot that. But she was born in 52, so oh, she was okay. quite a bit older. Yeah, I was born in 61. Yeah, so there. Uh, Jana says, uh, well, there, she's down in Florida with, with Scott, of course, Jana Trevis, and the beer man's wife uh-huh. down there in Mike Bear, they're talking about the weather right now, but uh, <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, yeah. 
All right, so whenever you were, uh, so Walter Ballard, and then you also worked with uh, Ted Musgrave some, right, a little bit at some well, point. When, he's he's going to be my guest next Monday. Yeah, I was mentioning Theodore. That. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Theodore. <laughs> yeah, man, like he did it. me a good job. Like, like I said, Ford Motor Company put me, put me down there to do an R&D deal with Bud Moore. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ted, Ted got fired by Jack Roush, and, and man, we, we built a new car. I got to go to the wind tunnel with it, and we went down to Darlington, and Ted had just finished second in that car to Dale Jarrett, the race prior to that. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, we ran ran up front and blew up, and and we just couldn't find the money that we needed. A lot of the cars that we actually built went to other teams. You know, they find the wind tunnel numbers out and how much lead we had in them, and and you know we couldn't say no. It was what was keeping the door open, and then Ted went on to to run that full truck season, and then uh, Bud got bought out by a family out of California called the Finleys, and I was able to get Derek Cope down there, and man, we run really good in the Daytona 500, and uh, was supposed to have uh, Harris Casinos as a sponsor. And that deal fell through, and we ended up uh, we ended up having to shut shut the door down. But uh, Ted came back and drove for me at Talladega. And we we're running fifth, and you know got got called in the big one. Uh, but I really enjoyed Ted because you know Ted reminded me a lot of Davy. You know he he could come in and he 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 looked at the package and he understood the package before he threw it down in the corner real hard. Mm-hmm. And and one of the things that I did as a crew chief was when they shut the thing off and coasting around the racetrack to come back in the garage, I never would talk to them. Okay. I just let them sit there and, and, and think about everything and not bury my head in the window net or whatever because, you know, it was always getting a plug check or whatever. And, mm-hmm. um, and I, would, I would say, okay, take me around the racetrack. Take me around the racetrack with me. You know where mm, where, yeah. where 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 do you where do you feel like, you know we need we need to improve. Right. And and that communication, you know, with me and Davey with the Bush deal, and and have working with Kale with with Waddell so long. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that deal with Kale. I mean, man, we uh, we ran up front uh, with him and, and just we uh, Robert was. Uh, you know, really, really had more power than we had, but the liability wasn't there. Yeah. Um, which it was a test. It was a test ground for us to really get ramped up in '87. Okay, so speaking of '87, that's what I, I was uh, actually about to to get started into that. I'm gonna try to do this. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but hopefully, uh, okay, it's got a black screen. Uh, I was gonna try to play this little video here. All right, it may be if I. <laughs> Do it this way. Oh, all right. Sorry, y'all. I know you don't see anything right now, but I'm going to try to do this and see if I can get this pulled up. And then we'll get going. Just a second. So bear with me and try that. Okay. Well, skip the ad there. (laughs) Maybe it'll skip automatically. Maybe not. All right. So anyway, if I can, uh, let's go back to the close cam. Back to this cam, this cam, this cam. All right, so I was going to try to play a video. There's Phil. Hey, say, say hey, Phil. And if you hey, got anything hey. to say, you got any questions, go ahead and. Oh, here we no, go. Sorry. There is an ad playing. All right. It's not so, Jersey KPI, it's, it should be Jersey KPI. There you go. <laughs> That's our sponsor. All right, here it goes. All right. Hopefully, this will play for y'all. And let me know if you can hear the volume on that. They can hear it. All right, so here we are. Uh, walk us through this. There's Joey, right? And you're on the pit box. Yep. And this was uh, 87, Talladega. Yeah, that was uh, that was one of the biggest days in my life, and, and the Ballards were able to, to ride on the car with me to victory lane. Stoney carried the tires. Danny held the pit board and rolled me my left front tire, and Clint changed the rear. And... Yeah. It was just really cool to be able to celebrate with them and Davey, which we all grew up around each other at, at 
at the racetracks and stuff like that for for all all of us to be able to share that together. And yeah. then we went on to Dover and and wore them out. But we we led uh, in every race that we went to. Phil, it was it was just pretty 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 awesome. Uh, yeah, I know. I was home watching it on TV as a fan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, sure. I was a Earnhardt Senior fan, so that didn't you know. Yeah. Hey, I mean, uh, you know, he actually came down to uh, to Victory Lane uh, and said hello to us all. He knew mm -hmm. how, how big sure. of a deal that was. But, sure. but like I said, we were we weren't running short tracks. We we were we were Selected big dogs. Races, yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. Wonderful times. So, so whenever y'all, uh, what made y'all decide to jump on the hood of the car and ride it through there? Well, I did it. I, I jumped in the passenger side window, and then everybody else just jumped on it. And uh, you know, I actually got fined for that field. Sure. I've still, I've still got the deal. Uh, Dick Beatty fined me seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars huh? for <laughs> uh, riding on the car. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, can I make installment payments? Well, they wouldn't let me in. Our next race that we ran was Charlotte. I couldn't get in the race. I was out there borrowing 10s and 20s from anybody, and they were serious about it. Wow. So, uh, and then once I got in the garage, uh, TRW came over there and had a check for me for $500 because I'd won mechanic of the race. Uh, so I went and yeah. back out to NASCAR and cashed a check and went and started paying people back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dale Lemon, he, he spotted me a 50. Uh, about that. <laughs> Up or press all right so well i was trying to make a phone call here and actually we had uh had it set up to call but i guess it's not going to work out so uh cliff champion says to tell you hello love love cliff man what what a what a hard charger he was a good crew chief and he he worked for mr Rainier there for a while went went to victory lane with him yeah and um he he was doing some boat stuff and things like that and um I think he's uh, kind of settled down and working on some antique cars and stuff like that, just kind of low key. Yep, yep. He was on here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the first time I met Cliff and Ricky Rudd, uh, Cliff's uncle Bill Champion was a driver, mm. and they went to uh, Rockingham with little Ricky and and finished per pretty decent with what they had. You know, we were all pitting in the back stretch. And that's the first time I met Cliff and 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 Ricky Rudd, mm -hmm. and uh, Ricky's father owned Al Rudd Auto Parts. Okay. And uh, and they came back and and ran against us in 1979 for Rookie of the Year with with Ty Scott. Um, and it was all we could do. Both both organizations get to the racetrack and stuff like that. You know, it's just sure. a, we didn't have the TV money then. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was mm -hmm. your purse, and um, I mean, we'd get to the racetrack and we'd go to Champion. They give us our spark plugs. We go to Unical. They give us our rear end grease, uh, and and fill us up with gas. Rig a ride, furnish the shocks. Mm -hmm. STP give us the STP and and the filters, and and that's what really was able to get, to keep us going. You know, the independence. I mean, it it it, it was just tough. Yeah, I mean, we borrowed borrowed everything from one another you know right yep mm -hmm. and if you get a sponsor then a lot of times i guess you could take their product and trade it for another product from another team exactly right yeah, yeah. but you know we we tried to get some uh insurance with k and k <laughs> insurance they wouldn't oh, yeah. they wouldn't float us <laughs> <laughs> in case we rate this car you're gonna yeah, yeah. yeah we can, they, they wouldn't float us on that one yes sir could you please fill in the engine type <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, how long were you with uh, Robert Yates Racing? Um, I went and got Robert. When Harry Rainier told me, he said, "Joy, look, I'm 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 on shutdown. Kale's leaving." And and we were just devastated because we'd sat on the pole at the Firecracker 400 with Kale, and Osmobile was slinging money around like crazy. I mean, they tried to come in there and do a deal with us, but. We, we we wanted the distributor in front of the motor, yeah, not the back. <laughs> right. Before and we... so Robert was down in South Carolina with Larry Wallace and Raymond Fox, and they were building motors for Gary Nelson for the five car on the super speedways. 
and they were doing a lot of uh, research and development for synthetics for Mobile One. And Robert had just gone through a bad deal with Diegard. Robert kept the place going by building motors that they leased and, and got new engine equipment and stuff like that, and the place went bankrupt. He, We went over there to try to get some of his tools and stuff, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't even let him have those sheriffs out there. Hmm. So Robert came up, and I set him and Mr. Rainier and J.T. Lundy and Lauren Rainier together to try to put a deal together. And, you know, Robert's like, well, what are we going to do when Kale leaves? I said, well, I got this little kid eating me out of house and home. He just finished seventh at Talladega. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, you know, can, can we sell him? I said, yeah. I said, the biggest thing that we're looking at right now is we got his dad – that we can go draft with. He can get in our car. I can share setups with Jimmy Fennig, and I, I think we'll, I think we'll be okay. And you know, it's like we got two teams with two different manufacturers, and we're we're helping both of them. Yeah. And that's how we were really able to accomplish a lot. Was, you know, and and Uncle Donnie, you know, Uncle Donnie mm-hmm. was right there a lot. Red Farmer. And Neil Bonnet, especially. I mean, man, you talk about Alabama game. Right. Them cats were strong. And they, they, they'd they circle around the garage and, and try to get everything better. And, and you always wanted to listen, you know, to what they had to say. And, and especially when you got a driver that's following you, looking at the attitude of your car. You know, and, and that this, you know, it re- really helped me out a lot. Yeah. Really helped me out a lot. Wow. That's a good – that's a great story, actually. And, and so you had um, – so you put Davey in there, and Davey was the uh, Davey was gonna be the next best thing. For I mean, if he would have kept kept going, kept racing, yeah. I mean, he would have been a champion. And um, I was gonna play the other video, but I'm not gonna mess with that right now. But the one where they were we wrecked it, the one hot night at '92 yeah. in Charlotte with Kyle and and yeah. Davey wrecking, and I was sitting on the back stretch. I know Phil was there too, I'm sure, and um, I was back there. I had been there the, the day before, or the, I'm sorry, the year before, when Davey just like, uh, rack, I mean, he just won every like every lap. Yeah, yeah. And it was a little bit misty that day, but, um, and then that, that that night was the wreck. Yeah, that was. Uh, we got put in the back for the last segment, and we had were pretty much doing what we did the year before, and the set of tires that we had. Um, it just the bias ply, you know, kind of hit and miss. Either they really would grow a whole lot, or they wouldn't. They just, you know, you went through that stage, and so we're we're sitting there running the third down the back stretch, and and uh, Kyle and uh, uh-huh. and Big E got together, and yeah. and then we, you know, when we seen them, you know, they were side by side, and then they got together, and I mean. The the noise from the hit over over all the crowd, everybody standing up and screaming. I still remember it just flew thud. Boom. Yeah, big thud. So we had to end pit and the thing sliding down through there. So I, I I ran down there. The car parked right at the exit of the road course. And so I got there and and the there's fire up underneath the hood. So I get in there and he's he's laid out and. Uh, I said, man, this this ain't good. And so I pulled the pin on the fire extinguisher, getting ready to pull it. And then Elmo comes in there, and he's he's got his guys, and they they get the fire out. Because uh, if I'd have pulled that pin, it would have probably choked him. Yeah, the interior. Because we had we had one we had one that went to the motor, and then we had one that that went beside him. Yep. So I'm I'm looking at him. And he had these old big veins in his neck, and he's laid over there. You know, he's laid over there like that, and they're they're sitting there pumping. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was the first race that we had the jaws of life. Okay. And and Elmo's over there. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna cut the roof off of it. Just we'll leave him alone. Race is over and all that. And uh, so <laughs> we couldn't get that thing cranked for the longest time. I had to go run down and get some ether and come back and <laughs> get the <laughs> jaws. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> So he he was unconscious, and then him and him and Larry got in the ambulance, and they went down to the Enfield Care Center. And Larry kept saying, "He come to," and he said, 
what what word we finished? Larry said, one. Oh, okay. And he did that. And uh but I mean that that year in ninety two, we'd win or wreck. I mean and we were wow. you know, a lot of people don't know it, but when we wrecked that one hot night, we didn't have a backup car for two months. Hmm. Two months. And Junior Johnson lo- loaned us one of Bill Elliott's cars. It was in the front of our truck with Budweiser in it. Wow. If we if we needed it. Yeah. Because Robert used to work for Junior and and um uh, but yeah, that was uh, you know we lost the championship that year, leading uh, when er- Ernie blew a tire and spun around, and yeah. Rusty made it through, and we didn't. Yeah, no. ninety two. But no. Davey, he got out and was waving. He wasn't kicking or throwing no. nothing. He yeah. got out, and you know his wife's about to have a nervous breakdown, and and we went and fixed the car and and, and finished the race. We got got it back out there. But, yeah, I have pictures of that whole wreck. It was a heartbreaker. Oh man. Oh. You remember whenever we had the uh, the reunion there at uh, at Bobby and Robbie's their shop their yes, shop uh-huh. there, and uh, whenever they got I was talking to Doug about this too when he was on the show. Whenever they had um, they said so they asked Robert to tell a story about Doug, you know, because every the whole night he's pretty much talking about Davy. Yeah, and then so. So he was like, he started talking about Doug, but then it started, then he started talking about Davy again, you know? Yeah. And it was just like, well, dad, <laughs> remember me? But, <laughs> uh, but, but Robert had such a fond uh, love for Davy. I'm oh, sure you did too. Yeah. Everybody did. I mean, but. Well, what, what was, close. what was nice about Davy is, you know, kind of reminded me about the, the Petty family, um, you know, family, family, family. And, he did so much before, you know, he was a big superstar, you know, help, helping little organizations out. You know, we'd, we'd leave the racetrack and, and we'd go to arcades. And uh, and he, he, a lot of times he'd just uh, go have them lock the door and let the kids play for, for free, pay, pay for that. And, yeah. you know, I mean, that's, that's how he was. We'd stop in the middle of the hood if they were playing basketball in the park and get out and – and just you know we you know 26 years old and and still kids right still kids mm-hmm, yeah sure so, that leads yeah, to well, uh go ahead yeah, i mean davy never came across to me as being a superstar he was very down to earth jeans and a you know a flannel shirt just laid back just a country boy yeah you know mm-hmm. and enjoying the big life but just still down to earth and very country inside and he was an athlete, man. I'm telling you, yeah. we, we he'd race with concussions, broke ribs, broke wrist, mm. um, um, and smile. Just just a bundle of talent. Um, and you know, then then came the helicopter deal. And yeah. He called me. He called me that morning because we had just run our first race at Loudon, and I basically cost us the race. Um. Before the race started, I had to get hooked up on an IV. I had just, I was just that that drained. They had, you remember, Phil, the, the pit road and behind the pit road was that new asphalt. Yeah. I mean, they were paving the uh, pit road when we went there the first day. Mm-hmm. And it was so hot up there. July. And, and it just, uh, and. I, I, I should have been drinking some Gatorade or whatever, but I get up and I, I like a good glass of milk, and that, that's probably the worst thing I did for me. But right. So we're sitting there leading. We're walking away, and we had a drop snout car, and that thing just wouldn't really get get off on the restarts. But I I, I changed uh, was changing the front tire and run, run across the, the wall, and I started – I was about dizzy. And we went out third, and, uh, and we lost the race to Rusty and Mark. And so he called me, wanting to know how I was doing. I said, "Yeah, I'm, 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 I think I'm okay." And he says, uh, "I need a 370 gear. We're gonna go uh, run that new Bush car over there at Charlotte." Mm. And I said, "Yeah, I got one. Just tell you boys, uh, they got the combination. They can get it out of my shop because they were already they were already up there." Mm-hmm. And he was gonna test the next day. I said, "Where are you?" He said, "Well, me and Red, and there was this other other friend of his that w- w- wasn't." didn't go with them and uh we're gonna go over to talladega neil has just bought an arc car and his son's gonna test it over there 
And so the next thing I, I know, the secretary's running through there, where's Robert, where's Robert? Um, and it was Bill French Jr. Mm. Yeah. And Richard and him had gone to the bank to make the last payment to where he he completely owned the team wow. to, to the bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, Libby said, you need to take this. And and he said, Joe, I'm just going to tell you, David's had a wreck at Talladega and it's not looking good. Y'all need to get down there now. Mm. Yeah. And, he, and he hung up. So Libby called the bank and Larry Larry uh, came back uh, he, he from a late lunch. And if he even went to eat lunch at all a lot of times. But uh, so Rusty had crashed real bad at Talladega. And I got a hold of Rusty. I said, Rusty, hey, uh, Davey's wrecked bad down at Talladega. Who who took care of you? And he says, y'all y'all meet me at the airport. We'll mm -hmm. fly down there right now. Wow. So Robert, Larry um, went and met Rusty, and, and they went down there. And um, and then Robert Robert called me, and it was just, uh, you know, so we, we had a meeting when we came back, and, you know, Robert says, uh, you know, what do you guys think about going to poker? And I said, Robert, we can't do that. We we got to go bury, you know, our our franchise quarterback here. And yeah. Just, you know, we, we didn't – the phone was blowing off the hook from drivers to drive that thing, but um, – so we went to Talladega, and that was really tough on us. Um, and Ford had Robbie Gordon – that was driving for A.J. Foyt in the IndyCar series and had run the Daytona 500 with Junie Dunleavy. Yeah. And Robbie came down there and did a did us a, a pretty good job. Because Robbie didn't know us. He was young. He was upbeat and whatever. And that's, that's really what we needed. You know, we re really needed that. Well, granted, he turned upside down in the trial but <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, that, that was that was that was robbie yeah i know when robbie drove for us he was always talking about that you see that power robert yates power right here next to us if y'all got i mean i got up beside us or whatever <laughs> that was in uh, 97 i guess and when he drove for us yeah and that kind of leads to what rachel was saying how do you cope with the heartbreaks on the track to overcome them and keep racing well you know we're kind of like doctors and you have to stay focused and you, you know, you, you're going to get close because I, I grew up with a very independent team and, you know, it was, you know, it was all we could do to buy, buy cereal and, and, and buy gas to get to and from the racetrack and borrow stuff and, and pay our parts bill. Um, there were several times when the season would be over, it would either end in Ontario or Riverside to where Walter and some of the other the independents would drive down to Daytona and they would borrow money from the France, France family for us to get through the two the two weeks, yeah. I mean the two months there. And so the deal was is when you went to get paid for the Daytona 500 that you paid it back right then. And that's yeah. that enabled a lot lot of of us to be able to survive. It really it really did. Sure. So uh, Paul Rodriguez says, Joey, what what race at Loudon did I go to? After, hold on, what race at Loudon did I go to that Davy after Davy passed? Uh, Strickland drove Davy's Bush car and the twenty eight uh, Haviland Mac Tools car. Yes, yes, that was. Uh, yeah, Hut. You know, Hutt married Donnie Allison's daughter, Pam, and they they grew up around one another, beating each other up down there at Birmingham and Huntsville. Mm -hmm. And um, Davey, Davey wanted that Bush team to go good so Red would have a job and his cousins, you know, something for them to stay in racing. And, and Davey built a nice shop down there in Hueytown for it. And... We had just started getting some money from Texaco on that deal. Uh, he was running a Buick. Uh, Carl Wagner was building the motors, and because Robert didn't want him in a Ford, Robert says, "I ain't building nothing for that. Y'all, y'all work for us. Stop worrying about that Saturday deal." But uh, how about Red Farmer Hall of Fame? Yeah. I mean, I'm I, man. They they announced that, and I I just fell apart because. 
you know, a lot of people don't know it, but, you know, when we would go test, Red would go with us and run another car. Mm-hmm. You know, go to Richmond, Daytona, and stuff like that. And, you know, we'd try to help him out, you know, when he ran an ARCA race at Talladega and Daytona. Uh, but, I mean, you'd go across the street, and they'd already be running over there at the dirt track on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Here comes Red with his 15-year-old car driving up, 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 smoking and everything, <laughs> goes out and wins a heat race and wins a feature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and the grandstand just going crazy. Yeah. Is he still racing now? Because I know about two, three years ago, I saw him running down there near the Talladega Short Track for the Snow Derby. Or Last time I talked to him, he was ice. building a brand new car. Yeah, about that. And yeah. she's like, Joey, hey, uh, I need one of them, <laughs> them Jer- Jermico's two speeds. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Jericho. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Jake McVie says, I met Davey at Pocono in 87 at the fence behind Hauler signing postcards. There was two or three people that didn't get – he went back in the Hauler to get more. We all got an autograph. He loved his fans. Yeah, That's that's him. Yeah. I mean, he he, would, he wasn't – when the race was over, he wasn't trying to get out of there. You know, he, yeah. he'd sit there and him, him and his mom and dad, and, you know, a lot, a lot of times they'd just stay an extra night and just – you know, you know, Pocono, uh, you know, you'd go in there and we'd have shotguns in there. We'd have fishing rods. We'd have worms crawling all in there. Yeah. <laughs> it'd bring the whole entourage, <laughs> golf clubs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Bobby used to land his plane right on the front stretch of Pocono. Oh, yeah. Didn't he? Yeah. I mean, here's a Bobby Allison story. When he was driving at Die Guard, he raced two nights on Saturday night. One of them was in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And he missed the driver cruise chief meeting, had to start in the back, and he landed that thing. And he got in the car, and it had mud and everything <laughs> on it. had Pfeiffer yeah. Air, Airplane Company or whatever kicked, kicked instead of the everything. Gatorade deal. And he yeah. ended up winning the race up there. And then he left and, and went and raced somewhere that night. Man, I'll tell I you mean, what. You talk about a Tony Stewart. Yeah. I mean, this, this, I mean he, he raced. I mean, he yeah. raced. Yep. He sounds like one of the toughest guys ever in, in NASCAR. I mean, uh, even to hear uh, when Donnie was on here talking about him and and uh, yep. who else was it? Was it Cliff Champion or, or somebody else we had on that was? It was the guy from the motorcycle place with him. Uh, Terry Levan. Yeah. Yeah. Terry. Yeah. And uh, yes. I mean, it was it, another guest that we had in was talking about him as well. <laughs> and, and he also flew and Kelly Arbor flew. Uh-huh. And then did you hear, hear the story about Kel Yarber and the uh, the bear in the back of the plane? Have you ever heard that one? Huh? That was something to do with Henry Benfield, you know. Henry oh, Benfield. okay. Yeah, so there you go. Anything, <laughs> yeah, that explains it all, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, something about a, a bear. Uh, Kel said he always wanted one of those little bears or whatever. So Henry somehow found one mm-hmm. and had it tied up and whatever, put it in the back of Kel's plane. But by the time before Kel even landed the plane, the bear had already chewed its way loose. <laughs> so when he landed it, he jumped out of the plane and took off running before the bear could get to him. So, uh, my, my best Henry Benfield story was we were at Darlington and this official had been getting on, on him for crossing the wall too soon. So Henry went back to the truck and made, made some brownies and put X lax in them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and we didn't see him no more. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. was out of here. <laughs> uh, I always heard don't ever eat the brownies if uh, he brings those around. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't eat, don't eat out of, out of that no. truck there. They're he was a real good gas yeah. man and and uh, really, really good employee. You know, he, he ran a little bit in that sportsman series that right. they had. I remember that. Actually yeah. drove. Yeah. Yeah. Until, uh, I think, until uh, Russell Phillips – died at charlotte yeah. and then i think they kind of yeah they did away with that program yeah. too many people were getting hurt yeah that, that's where uh, fatback came from he was a, a mechanic on one of those and yeah. uh i helped get him the job over there at mailing over there when lake speed was driving over there oh yeah okay so you remember harold johnson oh yeah because so i had him in here about a month ago i guess really yeah so that was a good time and how we, is he doing he's doing good uh yeah. he's he's, yeah, he's getting along good he still does his uh, chocolate every day and, you know, uh-huh. his vinegar and that yeah. kind of stuff. And so I actually called Henry Benfield, but he was in his truck somewhere up in uh, Virginia or somewhere. Couldn't hardly hear us. Yeah. So I was going to get him to talk to Harold a little bit. But, 
Yeah, but he's doing good. You have to go back and watch that show. He, he was actually uh, it's, he was pretty fired up, wasn't he? Oh, Phil? he was a ball of fire that night. But he got really totally in the political realm. Yeah, and it was like a yeah a, a big fish. You had to pull it in a little bit and let him out and yeah. pull him in. <laughs> I, I really miss Big Bill and, and Bill Junior. Um, oh yeah. I mean, they they would come by, and he if you didn't make a race, he would give you tow tow money home. He'd make sure you had enough money for gas to get home, yeah. and he pushed he pushed the racetracks to to do that also. I mean, you know when man, you think about it. In 1978, we had like 84 cars trying to make the 500. Yeah. You know, we had qualifying races and then a last chance race. Yeah. You know. And those were two week ordeals, oh, speed weeks. You know, man, it's like this yeah. this year being reduced down to what five days for speed weeks. That's yeah. just completely strange. But yeah, yeah. Uh, well, here, here's another joys and idiot story. I had some stuff that was going to go down to Daytona for the ARCA deal, and took it over there to the shops and says, "Well, what are you doing here so early?" I said, "Well, aren't y'all racing on Saturday?" Uh, a week from now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> a week from you, now. You got all your work done a week ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, man. It's a, okay, yeah, well. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> can, can you can you pay me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you pay me? Uh, speaking of ARCA, Janice says that Henry drove in several ARCA races. And then uh, Steve Knight. Remember Steve Knight? He says, uh, Fatback helped jo- uh, Ronnie Sewell in the sportsman division. And then my wife asked, did uh, Joey say what made him want to get into racing? Um, get out of town. <laughs> it, it just, I, I mean, that's that's what I wanted to do. I mean, we had this yeah. little dirt track called Metrolina Speedway, mm-hmm. and I used to ride my bike down there and sneak in there and watch uh, uh, Ralph Earnhardt and Haywood Plyer, Stick Elliott, and all them. They'd run there on Friday night, and if they had anything left, they'd go to Concord on mm-hmm. Saturday night. Yeah. And they're out there racing with their grocery money. People would uh, get their paycheck, and they go to the fish camp, and then go to the racetrack. Oh yeah, how about that? And it's just, it's just, yeah. uh, and, and I said, man, this is, this is, this is really cool, you yeah. know. That was out near you too, in, in Hernsville, because that was in North North Charlotte. Yeah, off six, how, uh, exit sixteen or whatever, Sunset yeah. Boulevard area. And- yeah, Dale Jr. did a, a really good show uh, on on that speedway. Uh, what is it they call tracks of the past or something that he he yeah, he, he he's yeah. done? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, man, that uh, that was do. that was you know in the last race they had there, Sammy Swindell won. Place is packed. Okay. World yeah. of Outlaws event, and yeah. then that was the last one. Like you know, uh, yeah. TBS uh, showed it on live. Yeah, but what the, what happened is they got annexed by the city of Charlotte. Oh, okay. And the taxes tripled. Yeah, and that's what eventually shut the, the fairgrounds down you know right okay you, i always wonder why they closed it down why, yeah you know what yeah because i remember it when as a kid um that was definitely one of the popular tracks around growing mm-hmm. up in charlotte yeah. yeah so all your travels all the years you maybe a classic moment something that really happened was memorable and also your favorite track well my favorite track has to be darlington it's the first race that I was able to go to Victory Lane, um, and we fell out of a race at, at, at Darlington uh, with Big Daddy Walter, and we all ran down and got up against the fence to see what it would be like, you know, to maybe one day get in get into Victory Lane. Hmm. And David Pearson won the thing, and. Uh, he gets out smoking a cigarette, ain't got a lick of sweat on him. <laughs> I mean, and we're drenched. I mean, it is so hot. And, um, but, you know, in 1983, we were down there leading the race with Neil Bonnet. We sat on the pole, and he, com- he comes in, and the, the stern wheel had broke. We had to run a two fork stock spot steering wheel that was off the 67 Ford Fairlane. <laughs> and that thing, he, he I mean, he, them cats was getting after it, and it actually broke the steering wheel. Yeah. 
So there, there was another one that, that got away. But uh, Dan Ford, uh, Waddell Wilson's best friend, came from home and Moody. And I said, Dan, what, what's been your biggest thrill? And he said, Joy was winning the Southern 500. And I was actually a judge in the Southern 500 beauty pageant when I was 17. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, because uh, the racetracks closed on Sunday, a lot of people went to the beach and then they had yeah. this big parade. And when I'm talking about parade, I mean, it, it was big time. Mm. So, and yeah. that's one, one thing that made me uh, want to be a Mason and a, and a Shriner, you know, as a, uh, Seeing them cats out there and them little old gun Carts, buggies and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. and raising money and having them big old smokers behind their deal, the whole yeah. hogs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about that? That's the first time I ever had yeah. liver mush. Yeah. Yeah. Love some liver mush. Mm. Y'all, we were talking about uh, Linda Vaughn earlier, so she's still she's still around, right? Right, Phil? Yeah. She, I saw her about three years ago down in Daytona. We had lunch together. And then I know she went through a little bit of an illness for a while. I mm. think she's doing pretty good now. She's like the uh, Miss Hurst Shifter. Hurst Shifters, yeah. Like Joey said, she was one of the first females ever in the garage. Man. Yeah. Talk about that, Joey, what it was like when you were around the 70s and there were no women. You were talking about the spotters. Yeah. Her scores. The scores, yeah. You, uh, the ladies couldn't get in the garage until race day. And, and that kind of hurt us because Katie would be making food and we'd have to go out to the fence and get it and we didn't have cell phones or whatever so we kept running back and forth and and things like that but katie katie was a mechanic you know edna agrees mom was a mechanic all, all these ladies worked on the car but they just they just didn't want the you know the the interference in it or or whatever and uh so when uh, when the media started hiring you know some people like lexus you know she went to work for nascar and she needed to be in there. That that really opened opened the deal up. Um, that really opened it up. And I met Miss Miss Fawn. She was actually a Miss Pure before she was Miss Hurst, which uh, Pure Oil was uh, seventy six. Wow. You know, okay. they they changed the deal from Pure Oil to seventy six. How about that? So Sherman Ballard says she helped make this sport. And um, so I remember just coming up, you know, I'll be sitting on the pit wall or whatever and coming up behind me, whatever, you know, kind of like she was, she'd come up and just wrap her arms around you and stuff like that. I mean, she yeah. was very, oh, you know, very she played athletic. that role very good, very, yeah, yeah. very and sweet. Sincerely, she wasn't fake at all. She's a real sweet lady. Yeah. Well, and, and she was in all other forms of motorsports too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and I've never been to a drag race and I, I'm afraid I might like it, but, uh, you know, she would bring some of the, the drag racer guys around and, yeah. and they'd sit there and look and, and, and around and, and, and talk to people. And uh, But uh, I have a son named Ayrton, and I named him after Ayrton Senna, and we were down there in, in, in Daytona. And he was he was down there to uh, see his friends uh, run the IROC race. And, man, there was all the photographers and everybody was around this guy. And I had an afro at the time, and he come up, and he says, uh, when, when, when are you, you guys going to hit the racetrack? You know, he didn't, he didn't have a schedule, or he, he, could, he was from Brazil. He couldn't hardly speak, but he wanted to see us go out and run. And it was after the IROC that had, had done went out and practice. And uh, I introduced him to Kale. And the next day, there was a picture of me and Ayrton Senna, mm. In the paper. How about that? I didn't really know who it was. Yeah. And everybody come over and said, man, you know Ayrton Senna? Uh -huh. And I said, right then, uh, I said, if I if I ever have a son, and I do, one's 19. Yeah. And uh, so I named him uh, Ayrton Jacob Knuckles. Oh. That's cool. And uh, my wife told me, she says, look, for your 50th birthday, we'll go anywhere in the world for a week. She says, where do you want to go? I said, I want to go to the Grand Prix of Monaco. She says, we ain't going to no racetrack. I said, well, go pull it up online. She come back about 10 minutes later, says, yeah, let's go. There's a lot of shopping <laughs> over there. Sure, and sure. She said, they race out in the streets. Yeah. So that's the year that they came out with the Ayrton Senna story. So we're, we're walking down there, and we go by the casino, and then they got this big building with this big banner of Ayrton Senna, and that's when it hit her. And we went up to the souvenir deal, and they had all the previous winners, and he had won like five or six of them. And she says, now I can really understand why yeah. we 
Wow. Well, and she enjoyed the shopping. <laughs> yeah, man, she's a professional. Uh, she works hard, though. Uh, we, we we couldn't stay in Monaco. We had to stay in Nice because the race teams take take the, the town over. Right. So uh, we had a 30-minute train ride around the French Riviera, but uh, – Anybody that ever gets a chance to go go over there for for one of those races, it's just it's just a spectacle. It's just absolutely a spectacle. All the yachts and all the sure yachts. yachts. You mean like was there a Jersey Cape guy? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> They're all over the world. That's right. Yeah. Thanks for this shirt. Uh, Jim Dooley had these ordered, but then uh, Janine sent them to us and they took care of us. So yeah, good very people. nice up there. Uh, before we forget, too, I want to say, uh, which ring are you wearing? Your Daytona 500, one of them. Yeah, this is the one that we won with Dale Jarrett. <laughs> okay. In in 96, uh, back, basically our first race with our, our second car. Um, and, and Dale had drove for us. He had quit Mr. Gibbs to come and drive for us when Ernie got hurt and knew he was going to be out for a year. Mm. So Dale came over there and – Robert was just so impressed with him, and Ford really liked him. And so Ford come in and says, "Look, we're gonna we're gonna help you build this new building. We want you to to, to run him. Uh, he's very marketable and and, and 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 very fast." And then er Ernie Ernie came back and uh, and Dale Dale won the Daytona 500, the Bush Clash, uh, four or five races that year and finished like third in the points and mm -hmm. and him and Todd Parrott they just really clicked really really good yeah you know, had a lot of success they spent a lot of time together had a lot of trust in one another and then you know Robert and Doug um were just building some massive power yes yeah. I mean it was I mean I I was sitting there looking at my input shafts uh my U joints and stuff like that and you know you could tell who a lot of torque, just mm -hmm. muscle, just 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 really hard on on stuff. Sure, yep. But That's uh, that was my best decision to make to go work over for Robert Yates. Yeah, and then we ended up being Robert uh, Roush Yates Engines. Uh -huh. So I ended up being there 16 years. So the best job I ever had, the best decision I ever made in my career, for sure. Well, I'm happy you got to experience that. You know, because I, yeah. um, I. I miss Robert. Think about him every day. Yeah. Uh, you know, just uh, it's just it's tough. You know, uh, su such a great person. Yeah. You know, good, good Christian man. Mm -hmm. He always wanted us to get the car through inspection to where we could always go to church on Sunday. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're you know we're 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 losing more and more. But you know when you know. When the, the old clock clock keeps ticking, and uh, yeah, it does. And uh, and he's got uh, you know son his son Doug of course uh, carrying on that legacy of Roush Yates or Roush. <clears throat> uh, I mean, well that was one of the big things too. Whenever they Roush and Yates, you know Doug was telling that story whenever uh, Roush and and Robert got together on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I think one of the the biggest things that um, Roush said he liked Doug you know, more than yeah. Robert, but they yeah. were competitors <laughs> <laughs> were fierce competitors yeah. for many years. You that know? was quite a tale. Doug yeah. told. And it was like a real edgy meeting. He said, you know, yes. it was an yes. icebreaker. You can imagine. And, uh, mm. and then whenever he did that, I think that was like a match made in heaven as far as, you know, the, yeah. the, the, uh, yeah. Cause they probably admired each other power. equally. Mm. You know what I mean? But didn't yeah. ever want to tip the hat, so to say, but working yeah. together, they became quite the force. Would you have ever seen that happening? Like, Looking back, back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> now, Robert called me, <clears throat> and I came out with a lug nut, and I need, he he owned a coating company at the time. Mm. And he says, let me take you over here, and it's the engine shop where they got now. Yeah. And Robert says, uh, Doug's going to come in here and do the cup motors uh, for the two teams. And he said that we're going to do uh, a spec deal. Uh, for all the IRL cars, it's going to be a Ford motor, and that deal, that deal with Cosworth, and that deal fell through, mm -hmm. and um, so I went went over there, and Robert says, "Well, my deal with Ford fell through with the IRL. This is pro probably a good thing," 
and he says uh, Ford's wanting us to to get together with Jack because Jack was doing everything you know up in Michigan and things like that and with Jack's uh, companies as you know they're working on every kind of street thing this that and the other thing and you know it's just too much for him yeah uh, and and a lot of the employees they wanted to move into Mooresville, Charlotte, you know, area, you know, get get out of all the snow and stuff like that. So when they put that deal together, it, it was it was a little tough because Jack's not used to Jack's used to every, everything his way, and 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 uh, so then it, it worked out really good. Uh, Doug and, and and Jack have done phenomenal things. I mean, there there's nothing you can buy out of the Ford catalog. They they make everything. I mean, Doug's got a tremendous uh, machine shop. Yeah. I mean, they 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 build they build everything uh, for for Ford. Yeah, and when I was uh, whenever we would get slow in the wintertime, I would get sent over to the machine shop and I would work around the CNT machines and stuff. Uh-huh. And yeah, I mean everything and stuff for the military stuff for uh, those little skateboards, whatever they are, the powered skateboards go through like Charleston and different places all over. But they were doing everything. Doug Smart, he's got a lot of you know a lot of uh, business smarts too. So that if anything ever falls through in NASCAR, he's still got a place for his employees. Uh-huh. You know, if he- and I think a lot of that was from Richard Roberts' uh, brother, Richard Yates. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he came in there, and, and we didn't have a sponsor. We didn't have anything. And, and Richard was working for a company called Baker Equipment and was very high up. Mm-hmm. And he came over there and hand, handled the money and did all that. And and. Doug used to come and stay with me in in the summer, him and Jeff. And Doug was going to NC State, and Jeff was uh, going to UNC Wilmington. They come up there and water ski and this, that, and the other thing. And he says, "Joy, he says, uh, I think I'm I think I'm going to come to work full time for my dad." He says, "I got a lot of new new ideas that mm-hmm. this engineering school has really, you know, turned me loose on." And he he came in there, and it was a it was an immediate impact immediate we were able to turn the motors more um that that uh doug doug just very smart he's a good father and just a good a good you know good good person all around he'd yeah. always find me in the garage or you know wherever hey man what do you need is everything okay you know yeah yeah absolutely yeah i was gonna have uh i was gonna have jeff uh, was gonna call in okay and i think but he, it was like an hour ago and I don't know. He he sent me a, a voicemail. Probably on so, his way to Daytona. I so think. Yeah. maybe maybe something like that. So yeah. So there's no telling. I could listen to the voicemail and see what it says. And yeah. But, but uh, Phil's got something very important. Yeah. And while I, I listen I, to I, that, I, I I got a fever, and the only <laughs> cure is more cowbell, and that means it's time for you to tell us your favorite Sterling Marlin story. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we're. It's 1975, and it's Friday, and we just got qualifying done for the fairgrounds 400. And his daddy qualified outside pole this race, and Sterling was trying to drive a late model around that quarter-mile track. He's all over the place, and finally he ends up flipping the thing out of the racetrack down in where we were parked down there in, in the cup garage, which wasn't a garage. It was just a flat area. And uh, so we run over there. You okay? And then Cuckoo gets over there, and Cuckoo looks over there, and he says, I picked the wrong baby up at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> that, that ain't no way that he can't drive and be mine. <laughs> uh, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> that's a true story, man. It tore that old car all to pieces. Sterling, classic, classic. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That's a good one. That's probably the best Sterling Marlin story we've heard so far. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So I was listening to Jeff Clark's voicemail, and he said that he to give him a call back if we could get him, but he he's not able to take the call apparently. So yeah, when I was trying to call him back. I thought I'd surprise you with that and see what's uh, see what Jeff's up to as well. Yeah, yeah Jeff and, and Doug are best friends. They lean on each other a lot, and and Jeff goes out and gets the deals, get gets paid, kind of keeps everything going where Doug can just concentrate, you know, with, with his guys and yep. kind of like when 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 Robert 
seen what Doug was able to do and the people that he was able to recruit, you know, the new, the new wave, Robert, Robert went into the, the car owner deal and, and started, you'd, you'd seen Phil out in the suites and doing tour guides and stuff like that. And that's, that was, that's really what he wasn't programmed to do. But, you know, when, when your son is, is able to walk into that, you know, um, Oh yeah, and Doug was always a class act at the yeah. track. You know, he was he oh, never yeah. missed a beat. Yeah, I mean Robert was a little more quiet and shy, but Doug yeah. was able to walk up to anybody and represent yeah. the company at top shelf. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised if Doug doesn't end up going, getting back on the car side a little bit as well. Yeah, I I think that's just too much on his plate. You know, his 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 daughter's playing golf. She's going to be a professional golfer. I mean, she's like. I think two years ago she was like number two or three in the state for her age. Wow. I mean she, she she's really got a beautiful swing. I yeah. mean, so um, that, that I mean you know being being a car owner and try to do you know it's uh that'd be a I'd be a, a you know a pretty tough deal because he, he's already yeah. tried it when you know when when his father shut the Robert Yates Racing deal down. You know Doug had a couple of cars over there running out of the Roush stable and. And that was just that was just too much for him. Right. You know? right. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think, Phil? If we should uh, spin the wheel. Yeah. See who our winner is this week. That kind of rhyme. What do you think, Phil? We should spin the wheel. Phil. Phil. Wheel. <laughs> if you say it like the South does, feel. Wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I would. Right? Uh, what is that? Purple. That is Jody Brook. Jody Brooke. Yes. You are the winner I'm this Geneva, evening. Geneva, New York. So what you need to do, Jody, is go on to uh, dhamim.com and click on that little box that pops up. Put your email address in there, and, and on the message box, put your physical address, and I will send you a prize. I uh, may even have Joey send you a prize. Or, yeah. You know, that kind of deal so we can – what you were talking about before the, uh, before yeah. the show. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Stoney – I was reading, oh, Phil said, thanks, Stoney. And then I, I saw a comment from my, one of my cousins here, Ballard. <laughs> I wonder if we're cousins. I mean, you never know. Yeah. I'm That's Stoney there. Ballard. That's who it is. That is Stoney. Okay. Yeah. So it's, well, it's, okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Sherman, Sherman is Stoney. Yeah. Kind Stoney. of like what Alfred is to Joy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, very cool. Nice to meet you, yeah. Stoney. I always wondered when my, uh, let's see, my former father-in-law said that he's talking about Walter Ballard in 1971 or something like that. And I always wondered. If it could have been, because my mother was a Ballard, and my and my grandmother and my aunt and whatever, uh -huh. were like intermingled there big time. So he says, "Great show, guys. Ham, you put on a great podcast. Thank you very much. I'm glad uh, Joey told me about this tonight. So thank you for telling him, Joey. Mm -hmm. And I'm following this from now on, and I will pass it on to my my student. It's very cool. And and speaking of that, I'll go ahead and tell you who the next guest is for. Actually, I'm going to have Brad Gilly in Friday. Do you know Brad Gilly? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's going to come up here Friday. I'm going to do a special show. And, Phil, you're not going to be here, right? No, I'll be at Volusia. And I didn't do that on purpose. I actually told Brad. I said, Phil's not going to be here Friday, so do you still? And he's like, you know, he was all, he's all for coming up here. So I, I sent him an email, and then I ended up – he sent me his number, and I called him today. So – but his show is on tonight on Sirius XM. Oh, okay. So he can't do Monday nights. So I think, you know what, I can do Friday. Mm -hmm. So I called the station owner, Billy Buck, who owns this radio station, and he was all for it. said, yeah. And then uh, next Monday is Ted Musgrave. Theodore. Yeah, Theodore. I have to remember that. So Theodore. If you want to do a call in, we can call in and talk yeah, to Theodore. Yeah, I'd love to. All right. <laughs> yeah. So we'll set it up. You call about 7.15, 7.20, something like that. And uh, so, yeah, we missed Jeff Clark tonight, but we'll, maybe we'll get him next time. Well, or Joey, what do you think about this? I'm trying to line up. And this is for one show. We're going to get Diane and Donna Richardson, or Dallaire, uh -huh. Bodine Richardson, yeah. Debbie Musgrave, and Carla Wallace. <laughs> the How four cool wives. Would that be a great show? <laughs> I'll tell you what. That, that, That'd be that, something, that, wouldn't it? That's really cool. There. We're, we're going to do it maybe in mm. March sometime or April. We'll get them all in here. So that'll be yeah. a, 
like a whole hen house full. Yeah. <laughs> and I was asking Phil, I was like, you mean four women at one time? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll just kind of sit back. Y'all go ahead. I'll just Y'all move my stop. seat right over there in the middle. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I could sit in the middle and be a ham sandwich. Anyway. That's oh, that's, that's good. good. And that's I'll good. be real cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there you go. So, um, but thank you so much for coming up. And if you, you, how can people get in touch with you? Or do you want them to get in touch with yeah, you? Yeah, uh, I'm at so Verdict Ridge Country Club. <laughs> okay. so, Come out and see you. In Denver, but yes. uh, yeah, uh, jknuckles28 at gmail.com. And you're building nine inch rear, Ford rear ends. Yeah. For, yep, anybody yeah. who needs one done. I mean, dirt, dirt cars, yep. uh, sports cars. Um, I just, uh, I, I, I can't quit. And you don't have to. No, no, I can't. I mean, you know, 50 years in NASCAR. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, and, and I'm 59. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 59 with a 12 year old girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. There you go. Um, I got married late. Yeah. <laughs> well, you and I had talked before the show started. This will be the first time we pretty much haven't been in the show for the Daytona 500. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to go to Volusia and watch the dirt races with a fellow classmate. And uh, John Schweitz played in the NBA, for, drafted by the Celtics, and played for the Pistons and the Supersonics. And Hold on. we're going to go to Volusia. Jerry Schweitz's brother was? Yeah, Jerry Schweitz's brother. Yeah, his younger brother. How come I didn't know he – maybe you told me that. I just didn't <laughs> yeah, remember. Yeah, we did, yeah. Jerry the truck driver. Yeah. To Jerry, talk, talk Jerry. Hard times. Yeah. Yep. Hard times. Yeah, yep. hard times. Yep. Oh, yeah, hard his times. His younger brother I graduated with, and he was like a basketball superstar in high school. Was I, Jerry – no, Jerry was he, just he, a truck driver. Well, he, I mean, Jerry was tall, so I can see. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, yeah. His brother, John, I mean, I'm pretty tall, but there was a recently we went to Caraway Speedway and the three, two other, fat, John and another classmate, we all got together and we had a picture taken and I was a real short guy and John's six, seven or so, but yeah. Wow. Yep. yep. Well, thanks uh, to our sponsor, Jersey Cape Yachts. Absolutely. Thank y'all so much for, for sponsoring the uh, show and uh don't forget to hit that subscribe and hit that like and turn on that bell notification that way you know every time we go live which the next time will be friday evening and so i'll be mailing out prizes tomorrow that's a promise uh for last month's prizes you know i try to do it all once a month instead of doing it every week so uh but they'll be good so y'all be happy to get them and uh joey's got one of the decals you'll be getting that if you want to will you show them that it's um Yep, that's it right here. Here's the uh, this camera right here. There you go. Yes. So you'll be getting one of those in the mail as well. And if you will, if you want to go on my website, dhamiam.com, give me your physical address and your email, I'll send you one in the mail, even if you didn't win the prize. But your prize is going to be separate w- along with a decal. I'm going to put mine on my golf cart. There you go. All right. <laughs> That'll be good, man. And send me my a picture. inspection sticker. Yeah, you should. Yeah. <laughs> and send, yeah, you should send me a picture of it. Too. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be something for my Facebook page, uh, Racing Roots with Ham on Facebook. And if y'all send me a picture as well, I'll put it on there, Racing Roots with Ham. And thank you, Phil, for coming back once again. And we'll yeah. we'll do it all again starting next week because you'll be in Volusia till next Monday. I guess you'll be coming yeah, back. Yeah, I'll be back here next Friday to give you a report of the whole speed yeah. week. So I'm going to probably hook up with the beer man and his wife, Jana, and maybe yeah. make a trip to the infield Thursday to watch the qualifiers. So. You know, I, I seriously wanted to go down, and I was considering doing it. But I don't know. Maybe maybe something will happen. Even Billy Buck this morning, he's like, are you saying you need Monday off? And I was like, well, maybe. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, that would be a good time to go down to Volusia. Yeah. Check yeah. it out. So. Yeah. All right, so – Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Joey. And we'll Thank see. you. It's a, it's a pleasure. And um, like I said, anybody got some, you know, I've got like 11 of those baseball cards out through there. If y'all got anything that you need uh-huh. signed or whatever. Just just send it on and yep. and I'll be I'll be happy to. I get I get a lot from Daytona that they they sent they send down there, but I, I don't have a license this year, so um I just want to make sure, you know, they, they don't get lost. You know, this I still have a, a big fan base. Yeah. Um, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm a racer, man. But yeah. you were one of the most flamboyant oh, yeah. front tire changers I ever saw. The way you would ballerina that whip up. that gun around, that That's right. whip that cord. No, nah, you set that trend. <laughs> you set it. He did. In the, in the thumbnail, that's why I put three different pictures of you there. Yeah. Like, I guess it was Kale's and then Davies and then uh, maybe Ernie's or something. Mm-hmm. Flipping that 
Yeah, with that, that look on your face of intensity, like you're yeah. trying to push yourself through the barrier. He, just, he yeah. would, <laughs> yeah, he'd be on the wall, and that gun would be just. <laughs> Here Man. comes the card. <laughs> you know, we 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 used to have the Unical pit crew race. Yeah, and we went down there, and we were 14 to to do that deal, and Walter got in the car in the fourth turn and drive around. You come in there. And uh, Bill French Jr. come out and st stopped him before he got in the pits. And he told him, he says, look, we can't, we can't have these kids coming out here maybe getting hurt. They got to be 16 for our insurance. And, dude, we had cheerleaders from school. I mean, it was a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> we had borrowed impacts from the Wood Brothers. We had brand new lug nuts on that thing. I mean, we were, we were prepared, man. Yeah. And just that, you know, if you, if you ever say, man, that, that was dejected, that was, that was a heartbreaker. Mm -hmm. Sure. That was a, I mean, that was a heartbreaker. And we had the whole garage pulling for us. I mean, man, they all come out there. Let's, let's see what they can do, you know? Yeah. Oh, that was always a big show at Rockingham. Yeah. Yeah. We do it yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Before the boost race. Yeah. That yeah. was a huge deal. They ended up switching it to Thursday, but that was later on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much. And uh, here comes the uh, outro. So enjoy. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest. From the racing world with their stories, their paths, their, their racing, racing roots. roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and their YouTube channel. Also on JerseyCapeYachts.com. Be sure to hit that subscribe, turn on the bell notification, so you'll be notified every time we go live. Now here's our host, David Ham.